<laughs> what's up everybody how's it going um so this is my 400 hour what is this what is this it's my 400 hour right yeah it's my 400 hours update for for the refold slash mi slash migaku slash ajet slash whatever the heck it is update of basically emerging learning through spanish so i've been immersing I haven't really been speaking, trying not to at least, um, and just purely been immersing through Spanish content, and this is this is that. So this is my 400 hour mark. If you haven't seen my others, recommend you check them out if you want to get more filled in on the process and things like that. I'm gonna try to make this pretty brief, but you know, I, I say that every video, so we'll see. But um, yeah, so this week or this period, for, right, the 400 hour mark, really pretty much late november to december to now has been rough it's been rough for spanish immersion it's been rough for me uh in my personal life it's been rough in general i for everyone i was like man 2020 hasn't really been that bad for me for on a personal level obviously the world's on fire but aside from me on a personal level 2020 hasn't been that bad well i said that in like october so I, well i misspoke because everything proceeded to go to hell in hand basket so <sighs> okay but so everything's been rough um we'll go into more detail <sighs> but because of that because of my struggles in my personal life or just just stressful situations it's been tough i've had plenty of time but i've been i haven't been studying <laughs> my studying spanish like i should have been um because even when i would try to immerse I would have this underlying stress. So currently, I'm not. I don't have my job. I left it because COVID. They were cutting hours, things like that, and I needed to find another place. So I got another job with one with one of my brothers, and well, I was supposed to get another job. Um, I was supposed to do the training, but everything kept getting delayed and thrown back because COVID and it's December and holidays, and you know they don't really have too many people to lot to training because you know you need like three people to train one to get a guy ready for the given job and then you know trainer got covid and more stuff delayed so basically it's like a month and a half down uh it's been it's like a month and a half down the road still don't have a job uh i i'm supposed to work next week since now that everything's died down i'm supposed to start training and go to work next week but again we'll see because i was supposed to work the week that i left my job I was supposed to be in that following week. Also, <laughs> there was a lot of delays because I had to register this app, which they just randomly threw together because of COVID, understandably. But this app was really janky. It was really hard to figure out, like, okay, how do I do this? This isn't working. Why is this isn't working? And then, you know, once I finally got done with that, um, they had to wait. I had to wait again because it was in the middle of the holiday period and they had to, you know, it was too much demand. And then once the holiday period started settling down, it was New Year's, but on top of that, trainer got COVID, so couldn't get trained and, you know, onboarded and all that stuff. And so, yeah, it's 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 been annoying. But on top of that, there's been other personal family issues, craziness going on, just just a lot of stuff mixed in with the fact. But the, the fact that I don't, I'm currently not working and I have a lot of savings saved up, so or I had a lot of savings. I still have a lot of savings technically, but it doesn't feel good watching my savings being depleted as I'm paying for my apartment and you know bills and everything and also more issues anyway i'm rambling about nonsense we're talking about immersion but due to that there's been an underlying stress with my immersion um anytime i've immersed I, it's been spotty i'll show you an immersion tracker but anytime i've immersed there's been just this stress this eh, just like this eh, in my ear and it's caused me to zone out a lot more and not pay attention and not enjoy and not enjoy the process enjoy what i'm doing because of that, I've been just being like, well, if I'm going to come into this dreading immersion, immersing, then I'm just not going to do it. And so I've been taking large breaks. Well, the biggest I've ever taken since I've gotten serious about it, which was uh, 10 days, anywhere from a week to a week and a half. So roughly like 10 days. <sighs> I've been calling vacations. <sighs> it's been rough. Um, I, I need to stop saying that. And um, yeah, so anyway. Now, though, um, so like I said, things have gone a lot smoother. I'm supposed to be going, starting my job next week or starting training next week. And hopefully, you know, and so like the stress is slowly just dissipated between personal matters. And hopefully, like I said, I'll start the job 
Um, so we'll see. We'll see where that takes me. I really want to get real, get back into the swing, get back into the step of things without that that monkey on my back, so to speak. Um, okay, but one thing I did notice is when I was taking those vacations, which again they weren't really voca- vacations. I was just really annoyed and really um, stressed and angry and frustrated. But yeah, I wrote it because, but through the vacations, I noticed that I would literally start itching, like itching for immersion, right? Once my brain, my mind kind of calmed down, I kind of got a little bit more settled. I started just really feeling like, oh man, I miss immersing, which was, which is crazy because I never thought I would miss immersing, but like I really was, and it was only after, it was only at, the first one was like 10 days. So it was like, I really was missing immersion i was like man i even 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 it says like you'll see on immersion track and it's blank that's because there was no focus active thing but like i did definitely like pull up a little youtube video or something like that you know here there or what read something in spanish and read it that was like in my feed or something like that so it wasn't like zero spanish it was like but hardly any to be worth measuring basically for me but that was, that was interesting to see that i really started missing immersion uh, and getting into it. And it shows that I really do enjoy the process. I really do enjoy, you know, reading the things that I'm reading, watching the things I'm watching, and it's cool. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a cool thing to take away from it. But I'm technically, so I finished the year with 400 hours. Um, remember, I started halfway through the year. But previous Before that, I only had like 20 hours of immersion through the first five months of the year. And I had... 400 hours immersion of active immersion through the last seven months of the year or six, seven, something like that. So uh, to me, I consider that a win. Um, so, yeah, but technically I was supposed to be at around, I'm, I, would, I was supposed to finish based on my calculations, right? Vague guessing based on my current pace at the time. I was supposed to finish out at around 430 to 440 hours so i was i'm roughly 30 to 40 hours behind of technically where i was supposed to be if i didn't take those you know those vacations or whatever um and just kind of get got really inconsistent so yeah uh, yeah that that happened and and it seemed to have carried over into january because i'm still kind of hit or miss but i've kind of made that decision Thus, I'm recording this um, update video just because, like, okay, let's. Let, we've had our fun. We, we not, we've had our lazing about, our flopping about. Time to get serious. Time to really get back into it, and see where it's. You know, and because I got a lot more improving, a lot of lot more improvement I want to do for you know, 2021. So, I'm hoping by the end of this year, you know, um, my my language learning my spanish will be really really good i want to at least get as good as my esperanto and so like i said my esperanto is around c1 so honestly now with all i haven't studied esperanto in it's been like six or seven months pretty much it's been, actually it's been even longer than that so it's probably been like a year of no studying esperanto so i wouldn't be surprised if my esperanto is like dipped into b2 area or whatever but it don't really matter um i can always get that up but so now that I've been cut back into immersing, you know, spotty, but still been doing it. Um, there's been some interesting things I've no. Okay, so there's been some interesting things that I've noticed through my 300, from when I made the 300 hour video after. So into the 300 to 400 hour mark, there's been some interesting things that I've noticed about my immersion. So a few. One thing is I was watching a a, a MIA update. Um, of with a Spanish speaker, so he was giving a MI update in Spanish, and I was watching it. And one, my comprehension from the from when I watched um their video before, not the same video, but like a new video, but it was the new update. My comprehension from when I watched them before was way higher, right? It felt like a lot of words were like kind of blurry and kind of messy and didn't really understand it or understood the general gist of it but so it was like a three in comprehension um this one definitely felt like a four or maybe even a five um definitely felt like i basically understood everything there was a few little words or laconic things got mixed together but like i would still understand the sentence i just couldn't hear like these two words that he that the person used i think ivan i forget his last name He's half Japanese, so he's learning Japanese. It re- really interesting. But 
one thing that I did notice through that was that he would give a timeline, you know, because like when he was doing certain things or when he learned this and when he started doing sentence mining or the tango decks or whatever, right? Okay, so, you know, in 2021, I was doing this and 2000, you know, hace un año, 2000, whatever, I was doing this and he's doing that and whatever. And so I noticed. I can understand all the words he was saying. And even when he was giving me the dates, because he was even giving me, like, oh, yeah, the May 9th, 2018, I was doing this. Then six months later, I started doing it. He was giving me the dates and all that. And I was understanding when he was using the dates. But the second he stopped talking, like, I, I completely forgot about the timeline. So I noticed I can understand what he's saying, but I can't maintain any side information in my immersion. Or I can't maintain any side information because it takes too much processing in my brain to keep up with what he's saying to begin with, to be able to understand what he's saying. I don't have any additional RAM to allocate to, to whatever the side um, timeline or any extra, any extra things that he has listed in there. So I was, I really catch myself. I'm like, man, I'm really like the second he says that I just completely discard whatever timeline or whatever he's trying to set, whatever things he's kind of trying to lay out. So that was interesting. I noticed that that was definitely a fault. I also had a realization about learning languages through immersion-based learning, right? This is crazy. So to me, it feels like learning languages through immersion or at the very least getting your comprehension to a, to as high a level as possible before starting to speak, it feels like you have the worst best friends in the world, right? It's like whenever they're whenever they're talking, whenever they have issues, whenever they have anything, you're like, you're there, you're listening, you're comprehending, you're like, you're there for them, right? You're just like, yeah, I feel it. You're happy, you're sad, you're empathetic. You're just like getting taken away by their words, right? And my phone went off. But whenever you're, whenever you need to speak, whenever you need to air your grievances or just talk about your day or whatever, like the language is not there for you. It's not there, right? You, It's leaving you, it's... It's, it's done with you. It's tired of your shit. It's just gone. And so that's what it feels like, man. It's like when you, when the language is there speaking, you're there for it. But whenever you need something, whenever you need to air out your dirty laundry, you know, the language is just like gone. So I don't know. Stupid, stupid thing I noticed, but it's just like, man, this is, this is terrible. Like, it feels so weird. So that's why um, I'm also, I also want to start outputting. So at the $500 mark, I want to start outputting, so obviously it's 400 hours. Once I get to 500, I'm going to start outputting seriously. Um, I've been, like I said, I've been doing pronunciation practice. I've been um, reading out loud, you know, because I've have, I have a solid enough base with the Spanish, you know, phonetic system and through pronunciation, pronunciation and really taking in language. I can definitely read out loud, you know, no problem. Sometimes I do have to Google words for, like, to figure out the intonation or to figure out, okay, I don't feel like that's right, but... Yeah, but other than that, um, yeah, so I think I have, I can, I've been reading out loud to help me, you know, practice my intonation and whatever, and so, yeah, we've been doing that, but, and so I mentioned that I've, my emergency is very spotty, well, because of the underlying stress, well, one thing that I have been doing as a response to that is I've been really focusing on exercise, so, you know, going to the weight room, or going to the gym, going to the weight room, going out to the field, playing soccer, you know, doing drills, doing stuff like that, being very active because it made it very difficult to pay it to be able to immerse, right? To immerse in Spanish. But because of, you know, that mental stress and the thing that was wearing on me, but it made it very easy to work out because, you know, to blow off steam in that sense. So because of that, I've been taking my, my, my physical exercise is going to be my second goal that I'm starting. Obviously, my first major goal was learning Spanish and getting consistent with that. My second, now this is the next year, the following year. Um, last year was the year of Spanish. This year is the year of exercise, getting myself in shape. Um, and so I want to do that. So I'm still going to obviously be doing my Spanish. But the thing is, previously, in the previous year, like I said, when Spanish was my main focus, um, I wanted to... Spanish would have the tiebreaker. So er, Spanish, everything um, would go after Spanish. Uh, so I, just, I wanted to say supersede, but I'm not sure if that's the word. Um, but Spanish was the main focus. And if I had, so if I finished a day and only had an hour and a half, 
I'm not going to the weight room. I'm going to do my Spanish because I ne I need that hour and a half for my Spanish. Well, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be like that now, but for my exercise. So, if I only have an hour and a half in a day, I might not allot the entire hour and a half. Probably it's going to go to some kind of exercise, and then um, Spanish will I will get like this whatever's left kind of thing. And I mean, I think that's better. I mean, this is gonna be fine because it doesn't take. It doesn't take that much time to work out as it does for Spanish. Obviously, it's like two to three hours a day, if not three to four sometimes. Um, but so that's kind of what's going to be happening. Um, it's but it's yeah. So that's the new update. Like I said, it's been much easier. I've been really getting on. Uh, it's not like I haven't been doing anything. I've been really getting on focusing on my exercise. I've actually already lost 12 pounds just from the past two months <laughs> of just exercise because, you know, because blowing off steam and getting ready to stress so new habit me working out will be my main my main focus my chef concentrillo uh concentrillo how we would say in the soprano um for the 2021 and so yeah we'll do that and hopefully like i said i really want to get my spanish and my exercise i want to be by the end of the year i want to be really really good i want to at least be b2 in spanish i want to be b2 in spanish and be hit like i don't know hit a new weight loss goal so that brings us back to output so i'm very close to outputting um i'm i'm not following you know matt's guide to the t matt and uh, tops down ethan i forget his name i think it's ethan you're always top down to me ethan or if, if that's your name um so anyway uh, my plan for output it's going to be different. I'm not going to get like level six comprehension in in my home domain or anything like that. Like, no, I'm just going to start speaking. I'm just going to start really practicing speaking, but practicing speaking across from a native speaker for like the first 50 hours of speaking practice, if I can help it. Um, you're going to be using italki. That's going to start in the 500 hour mark. We're just going to get it done. I live in Texas. I run into my two brothers are married to to Mexican women, uh, so like literally half the family is Mexican. And two of my five brothers are married to Mexican women, so literally like yeah, there's I'm, I'm in contact with a lot of people. Granted, their English is all like like native, but um, I run into people. It's not uncommon for me to run into people who don't speak Spanish. I mean, who don't speak English. Um, so like, it's not like I'm just in a spot where people never speak Spanish. Hell. Two exits up from me, because I live in Dallas. Two exits up from me, it's, um, was it Jefferson Boulevard? Where it has the largest density of, like, Hispanics or um, in, I, I want to say Texas, but probably not Texas, because El, Paso, El Paso's a thing, and San Antonio. So, I don't know. But there's it, it, a lot of people. There's a lot of Spanish-speaking people. Um, like I said, a lot of stores, a lot of, a lot of tiendas, you know, stuff like that where you go in and no one speaks English kind of, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I don't want to hold or keep holding off and holding off outputting, especially with Spanish is so close to English. I think at this point I'm, I've gotten a really good understanding of how the language sounds based. And as long as I start outputting with a native in front of me who will correct every little thing, you know, make sure they correct every little thing, I'm going to be feeling pretty good about outputting. So, like I said, I'm planning, I want to do like four times a week of outputting on top of my two to three hours of input. It's going to be tough. Um, like I said, I want to get to like 50 hours. Uh, and then I'm going to, once I get to like around like 30 to 50 hours of italki lessons and making sure I feel really comfortable with my output, or at least to get a base, then I'm going to be going on to like VR chat and like, you know, chat rooms. And then I'll do more informal you know, then I'll probably go into Discord, uh, the Spanish, Immersion Spanish Discord, and chat chat more in that sense. But I don't want to uh, do that before I have, like, I'm paying a native to correct the living hell out of my Spanish. Because I know it's going to be bad in the beginning. Um, so, yeah. So, that's my plan for output. And I'm pretty, pretty, pretty hyped for it. Also, I want to create a deck for word genders. Cause I feel like I'm going to be messing up a lot of gender. I've hear, I, I consistently hear that's an issue. Even for like really advanced speakers, so I think I want to create a separate Anki deck that's just like for word genders, for tricky word, tricky ones, right? And that'll just help me remember, like, oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. So I'm making making those. Um, so yeah, that's my plan for output. Can't wait to get that going. We'll see.
And so now let's talk about my progress. So what do I feel from the, do I feel, what feels better from the 300 hour video to the update video to the 400 hour video, which is now, how do I feel? Um, well, one, I still feel sometimes very discouraged from listening to native speaker content. So like TV shows, again, YouTube videos, for some reason, don't feel that bad. Like, uh, some you speakers can be tough, but for the most part, I don't feel bad about YouTube videos. Um, I usually understand if it's a topic I'm familiar with, then I can understand the video really well. If it's a topic I'm not familiar with, I can at least get the gist of it, right? If not feeling any issue. But like watching native content movies is so freaking difficult. Like, geez, man. Um, I need to, gr- I need to like grind it a lot more, but if it's just like, it's so difficult. Like I was watching a movie called Holy Goalie. So I watched it's um uh it's a movie where basically there's this there's a church and they're trying to the church is being the owners turning their church into like a strip mall or whatever. And so they they need to win the was it La Copa Clero, which was like the clergy cup, I guess you would say in in English. And where you try to you win that it's kinda like it's like a league of churches, and so you try to win that to hopefully get their like church to have enough notoriety to where the owner won't sell it. And I think the movie is from the movie is from Spain. But and it's like really difficult. Like on top of there's a lot of they use a lot of religious terms and things like that. So but even then normally it's just really freaking difficult. It's like it's like fuck. Ah, this is really hard to understand. Um I've been watching another, I watched another movie twice called Nuestro, uh, Nuestros, uh, Nuestros Amantes, yes, Nuestros, not Nuestras, Nuestros Amantes, or Our Lover, Our Lovers in English, pretty good, well, actually, I really like it, um, again, diff- it's from Spain, it was difficult to understand, especially the first time, second time was easier, but still, mm, I could get the gist of it, but, like, I just need to, I added it to my, I'm going to be passive immersing with that. Um, so I, I pull, I rip the audio file and so I'm going to be using that for passive immersion, but yeah, it's just, uh, I really need to really grind native speaker content. And it's weird too, like I said, cause dubs, dubs are like way easier. Like I still can have trouble with dubs. Like I've been watching the Jujutsu Kaisen dub, dubbed in Spanish and for the most part, like I, it's, I would say it's at a three, no subs. Um, but like, it's still rough. I'm still missing points. Are missing things, especially when they start talking about power systems. When they're talking about their abilities and what they can do, or really how the power system work, all you have to mute imbue it with your essence, and and it's just like encounter the other person's you know domain with. It's just like okay, this was difficult. <laughs> so I actually I actually had to rewatch in English just so I can understand the power system. But I still the crazy part is I still didn't fully uh, get the power system when I rewatched it in English, the English dubbed. So yeah. Uh, still working on it, but the dubs are dubs are way more easy, like way more easy, way easier. Uh, I think that was a Spanish way of wording in Spanish, but it is way easier to understand um, the dubs in uh, the dubs than they are to like native movies. Um, so yeah, also I, re- I rewatch. Konosuba. So I watched Konosuba the first time, like maybe a month and maybe a month and a half ago. Um, didn't hardly understood anything because they're like there's like and the Spanish speakers are doing like anime dub girl like you know you know this like I don't know I can't do it. You guys do a better anime girl than me, but they do the anime girl kind of thing and their voice is really high pitched and they speak really really fast. Think like Alvin and Chipmunks but on crack. It's kind of like that, and especially the way the humor is. The way the humor is very, very dyn- It's very witty, and they say re- like really slick stuff, really you know, kind of really quickly. So that's kind of the way the humor works in Konosuba. And so it was very difficult first time. Second time, I rewatched a couple episodes, and it was way easier, way easier. Still missed certain things here, or there when they were like get arguing with each other. I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. Um, still, that part was sometimes kind of difficult. Um, but yeah, way easier. So I just, I just need to just keep listening and listening to, to that stuff. And I need to branch out to things that are more difficult. Um, so <sighs> yeah, I, I need to stretch out and, and go and just like, 
one thing about this new job I'm going to get, um, I'm not going to be able to act of merch like I was able, I'm able to at my old job, but in my new job, I will be able to steal passive merch a lot. So that'll be good. Um, I'll add, I need to add all this native content stuff into my passive immersion and just grind the ever living hell out of it. So we'll see about that. Okay. So this is Monkey. As you can see from the hot map, I have not been doing anything. You can't really tell, but these are all squares. I just did um, 68 cards yesterday, and I'm gonna. So I have 112 cards that I need to do. Um, I have new cards. I have like almost 40 new cards. I'm going to make more cards today, but I'm, I'm not doing the new cards until I <laughs> catch up with the old cards. So, yeah, Anki's been probably the most affected. Anki's been extremely uh, spotty the past month and a half or so. Um, yeah, it's just if I didn't enjoy it at the peak of my immersion, I'm definitely not going to want to do it even when I have nothing to do. Um, just like ugh, it's just been feeling like a drag. So you can see the last the yeah, last year, my, my Anki's always been spotty. Never really bothered with it. As long as, like I said, as long as I kept the general train up, I was fine with it. But, like, as you can see, it just kind of went to hell in a handbasket on the, near the end. So, what date is this? November 14th. So, yeah, like, mid, mid-November, things started kind of going crazy. And then things got really crazy into December. And, yeah. <laughs> so, ooh, didn't feel, didn't, didn't finish the year, like, the best. But, uh. Yeah, okay, so hopefully 2021, we can kind of get it together and, yeah, get to uh, get to moving, get to, get this thing going and be more consistent. So, yeah, we're going to go to the statistics, adding cards, you already know, if, 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 my, um, if my active use of Anki is going down, then I'm definitely not going to be adding a bunch of cards. But so far, I have like 921 card or 929. I do have 200 something, 220 suspended in at the other deck. Um, where is that at? So yeah, Resignita y Cartoy. So this is yeah, 207 actually. So yeah, so technically I have over a thousand, but you know, like I said, I still don't be adding. I I know way more cards outside of Anki. I'm very light when it comes to, to my Anki use, even to begin with. So yeah, don't expect. <laughs> don't don't th this Anki isn't a reflection of how much like how many words I know or anything like that. Like no, I'm I'm pretty loose. On top of that, I even add like if I'm seeing if I see a verb form or conjugation form of a verb that I don't recognize, I just make a new card for it. Like I'm like just so I can recognize it. So like um, one of the ones is like I want to say oler no or oir. Which one is to smell? I think it's oler. Because you have oler, which is like the base form, right? Uh, and then you have huele, which is like this, or, or which is like the third person present form. Or whatever, who, get, who cares? But basically, like, you have oler, O-L-E-R, and you have huele, H-U-E-L-E. -E. Like, it doesn't, you know, so I made a new car for it. Like, I'm not about to just try and add that. No, no, we're not doing that. Because of that, I remember the, I can recognize the word more so. I'll, so much so that I, rec I forget that the word has uh, a, actually, I just want to double check if it's Oler because I feel like I'm, yeah, Oler. But um, so much so that um, I sometimes forget that Oler is the verb, like is the default form of it. So, yeah. Okay, and so this is my immersion sheet. I just wanted to show this to some anyone who wants to see it. Blue is just means that it's native content. So I've, I don't know if you watched the last video. I've added more stuff that I need to, you know, that I want to watch in native content. So I've added more stuff to it, especially here. Like I said, in Nuestros Amantes, I've watched that. Uh, Lo más sencillo es complicarlo todo. That one I want to watch. It's, it seems really funny. It's about like... I don't know. It's like a girl with a boyfriend or a girl she really likes is about to get married. So she's going trying to ruin a wedding. You've got this. It's funny. It looks funny. At least um, it's with a baby guy gets stuck with a baby. That's not his. That some lady on the street just gave to him. Funny as hell. It looks funny as hell. I need to watch it again. I need to watch it. I understood the trailer pretty well, but I doubt. I think once I get into the actual movie, <laughs> all that comprehension just just goes down to the, to the bottom. I'm um, holy goalie. Watch that. Eh, I don't really like it. It's supposed to be a comedy. It's, it wasn't really funny to me. And I probably wouldn't want, probably won't watch it again. Probably won't use it for my past emergency because I didn't enjoy, didn't enjoy it. Um, still watching solo leveling. I've been watching. I mean, comics this is manga. So I've been reading solo leveling, 
I've been reading uh, Kaiju number eight and One Punch Man. All of them are really good. Been kind of uh, books. Like I said, I finished volume one last time. I'm almost done with volume two. Like I said, I got like 60 pages or so left. Um, so yeah, I really need to. I want to get back read Percy Jackson, and I have a bunch of native novels. I want also want to read uh, De La Tierra a la, tu, a la Luna, uh, Caballería Roja. I have I have a lot more. Now, actually, over on the bookshelf, I literally have like 14 or so Spanish novels. Just because since I live in Texas, you can go to like Barnes & Noble or Half Price Books and find a pretty, very Spanish section. So, I've been buying books. I um, haven't read. It's been it's more effective for me to read um, on the computer because I get to look at words really easy. So, I haven't read, bothered reading any of those because I know it would be a pain in the ass to mine sentences from and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that I'm going to start reading those when I get a much more better level and I can just kind of casually read without having to rely too much on a dictionary. So I'm going to be doing that. But yeah, so I've got actually even more books over there. Um, but yeah, so this is it, man. This is it. And like I said, I need to watch more native content, more native content, even more so. Because like I said, I still struggle to understand native movies and film, stuff like that at times. I can generally still get the gist, but it's a very rough gist. And I'm missing a lot of the humor and a lot, a lot of nuance, even some points. But it's weird because, like, YouTube, like, I watch YouTube all the time. And I guess it, it also matters. Like, I, I watch a lot of YouTube, so I understand YouTube really well. Like, of course, you, you know, you spend, spend, like, half of your active immersion on YouTube, you're going to understand YouTube YouTubers really well. You spend almost no time watching shows, you're going to not understand native content shows very well. So, yeah, I need to get better at that. Also, the Corona cut's gone, guys. What do you think about the Corona cut? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think, I think, uh, I had to, I had to trim it down. The, the Afro bush was getting way too, you know what? I'm gonna stop there. That didn't, yeah. That, yeah. But yeah, so, Two Cities Lam, Lam, readily recommend this if you don't watch shows, like, from, you know, 90s and early 2000s, or hell, even, like, mid-2000s. Uh, kid shows, or, or shows from your, from your childhood, really recommend that. I haven't watched... I hard, have hardly ever go to that site anymore, but um, really, really cool. If you're also looking for an anime dubbed in Spanish, Crunchyroll, really good. They got like, I want to say a couple dozen anime dubbed. Funimation, if you have a VPN for set to Mexico, because Funimation released in Mexico. And that's what I'm watching. I'm watching Overlord Dub, which is here. Funimation MX, Overlord dubbed here. Really good. Also, like I say, I have My Hero. They have like six or so anime for their first season. So, yeah. Netflix is also a really good place for Spanish dubbed anime. Um, so, yeah. Um, like I said, as you can see, I have a lot of stuff on Crunchyroll. And we'll do that. I mean, this is all dubbed content. I believe. No, except for Sub. Overlord Sub. And I only watched that because I didn't realize it was an Overlord dub because I really wanted to rewatch Overlord. Because uh, I love the show. It's my favorite show of all time. That's why I'm reading the visual novel. I've already read the whole series in English. I'm rereading it in Spanish. I was even wanting to buy the books. Because I have the books um, in English. Love the show. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so this is my immersion journal. I mean, my, my immersion tracker. And as you can see, I currently have 409 hours of total active immersion. This is the month. You can see there's a huge gap. I mean, I did 15 minutes of reading. I think that was like one solo leveling chapter. I did 15 minutes reading here, but you can see I've missed, what, how many days was that? It's seven days, so this has been a week of me not doing any Spanish again. But let's go to 2020, because where all the magic happens. As you can see, oh, so November is going strong. Here's the month, November, going strong, right? These are all in minutes, so 130 minutes of reading this day, 124 minutes, whatever. Um, so, yeah. I can definitely even ramp up my immersion. Um, as you can see, this is, uh, I ran into a lot of stuff. First vacation, I saw, oh, you know, let me get back in. Uh, uh, it's stress is coming back. Something crazy up is happening again. I said, I'm not feeling it. I was like, screw it. Second vacation, let's do it. And then I went back to it. Kind of went back to immersion, whatever. So you can see. But for the year, like I said, I finished, I, I, I pretty much was like, I need to at least hit 400 hours, right? Or I need to hit my 30 minimum, uh, 30 hour per month minimum, which is like an hour a day. I was, I set that minimum again when I'm not feeling it. So I was like, I got to at least hit the, my 30 hour a month minimum 
because I most of the time I'm usually in the 50s or 60s for my minimum. But I was like, okay, let's do it. And um, so I I managed to like grind, <laughs> grind the last days to like really get the minimum and really focus and dial it in. So I managed to hit 400 hours. Um, so yeah, like yeah, you can see the last quarter. So I had 60 hour, 68 hours of active immersion for the last quarter, which is the last three months of the year. So October, November, December, and I had 70 hours um, of reading. So now my my it's interesting. My reading split is now like 50 50, and it's really close to 50 50, but. Uh, the crazy part is I'm not even trying to even get it to 50-50. It's just I watch as much as I want to watch until I get bored, and then I get bored, and I want to read, and I read as much as I want to read until I get bored, and I go back to watching. So it's not – and it somehow levels out to being dang near 50-50, right? A 50-50 split, which is crazy because I'm 1,000% I'm not even trying. I don't even notice the split until like a month and a half in, and I'm like, whoa, right? Like it's crazy. It's crazy how that works out. But you can see my I've been reading a lot more because I did 70 hours of reading. Um, so pretty interesting stuff. But my hours are down, obviously, like I said, missing like two weeks of and even the end of this started sort of happening here, too. It's just like, man, it I just kind of fell apart in the end. And so in December. So I want to hit this year strong. Obviously, I haven't hit it that strong, but we'll see, man. We'll see. Hopefully this will be better. Hopefully my past listening will go up too. Like I said, once I start working uh, my new job next week, hopefully this past I'll be able to do a lot more passive immersion and we'll get this show on the road. Okay. <sighs> it's been a long video. Now, with that being said, what are my plans for the future? I think this goes without being without being said. But, but. More native content, a thousand, a thousand percent. I need to watch more native movies in particular content. And I also need to expand my vocabulary. So I need to read more diverse books. But I love, I want to at least finish volume two of Overlord. Finish that. I want to start reading Shield Hero, but I also want to get into, need to get into more native content books. It's just hard because it's like, I'm using this as a way to uh, watch the stuff that I want to watch, which is a lot, usually a lot of anime or light novels. Uh, watch stuff I want to watch, read stuff I want to read, um, but just do it in Spanish, right? Because it's like two birds, one stone. I want to watch this, but I don't feel like, you know, I don't want to waste time doing it in English, so doing it in Spanish. Because I do have the Rise of the Shield Hero light novel over there, and along with the Demon Slayer one of uh, Volume 1, and I wanted to read those, but it's like, no, no. You know, you have things to do. You need things to do, so do it in Spanish. And so... So I'm doing it in Spanish, right? Like, yeah, it's not ideal because it's not native content, but at the same time, it's like I really want to read it, and if I don't do it in if I don't do it in Spanish, I'm gonna do it in English, and so you know, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, native native content. I also this it sounds like a lot like what I said at the 300 mark hour mark. Got to increase my passive immersion. Hopefully, this new job will do it for me. Um, yeah. And just so it's just going to be focused, going to be native on native content and focusing for output, um, con, you know, getting prepared for output um, at 500 hours. Like I said, just more practicing my pronunciation, more reading out loud, correcting my pronunciation. Because when I'm reading out loud now, I can hear when I make a mistake. Like I, I can hear when I pronounce like this, the moment I pronounce something. So I have a sometimes I'll have a bad issue where I'll round off my eye. So I'll say it instead of e. Right, you know, difícil, difícil, instead of difícil, right? So once I notice that, I'll like when I'm reading out loud, I'll hear immediately when I'm making a pronunciation mistake, and so it's really cool. Um, so yeah, I've been doing a lot of that because my ears really tuned, and I can hear when someone has an accent and when someone doesn't, and stuff like that. But again, a lot of still a lot of holes in my, um, a lot of holes in my vocabulary, a lot of holes in my comprehension. I really want my my comprehension to be really, really high. Um, and I want to be able to speak because I live to too many Mexicans and too many Spanish speakers, you know, Hispano Atlantes. I live way too close to all of them for me to be able, for me to not be able to speak, at least to some extent. Like, so I want to at least get my speaking to like a B1 and then keep on immersing and keep on outputting, right? And then I want to get, if hopefully my comprehension gets to like a B2, high B2 or something like that, and then I can catch my speaking up from there but i need to be able to say something right like i can't just be uh or using spanglish because i've actually had 
encounters um, where I've run into native speakers that literally didn't speak English. So I was playing, um, I was playing soccer at a football futsal court, not football at a futsal court, and um, I ran into a native speaker, um, Spanish, this Mexican guy and his kid. Mexican guy didn't know Spanish. Kid did. I mean, Mexican guy didn't know English. Of course, he knew Spanish. Kid didn't, or his kid did know English, but um, he didn't. So, but we were chatting it up in in Spanish. But it was it was very cruel. Like I was switching in English, right? Because if I didn't know the word, or I didn't feel confident in anything I said, right? I've also had other issues where I was working my previous job where you would have people come in like maintenance or something like that, and they didn't speak English, and they'd be like, uh, you know, where where do I go? And I can I can tell them, like, oh yeah, you know, este edificio a la izquierda, or you know, you know, you know, whatever. But like. It's, I still didn't feel very confident. I was I was repeating like, what did I say? What did I say was right? What? So yeah, I want to improve my uh, my ability to speak with native speakers. You know, a lot of con fluidez. You know, so <sighs> we'll see, man. Hopefully this will this will work out. And um, and then yeah. So this has been my 400 hour update. I hope you enjoyed. It's probably way too long. I'm gonna have to chop it down. And yeah. So see you at 500 hours. And hopefully I will you know, finally be doing, I'll be finally doing my output. So it's going to be dope. Can't wait. Let's get it. See ya.